So Mr. Mark Zuckerberg and the AI team at Meta, they're on quite a tear this week. They're everywhere. They're dropping Llama 3.1. Mark is up on stage with Jensen Huang chatting up a storm, kind of semi-aggressively going after Apple and doubling down on his commitment to open source AI models and open source and open ecosystem for everybody to participate in. And he mentioned this in his interview with Jensen. And today we are seeing the confirmation of the new segment, Anything Model 2. As AI takes over, make this your mantra. Let the robots do the work. Subscribe to stay on top of AI news. Sam 2, the first unified model for real-time, promptable object segmentation in images and videos. It's available under the Apache 2.0 license, so anyone can use it to build their own experiences. In addition to that, they're also releasing the SA-B, the data set that's four and a half times larger and has 50 plus times more annotations than the largest existing video segmentation data set. This has been kind of one of the complaints about how AI is open sourced, quote unquote, by some of these companies. Some people are pushing back saying, well, technically you're supposed to also open source the data. Where are we getting the data? A lot of companies aren't really telling us where they're getting the data, probably because they acquired some of it, at least in some fashion that they do not want to talk about. But let's take a look. So this is the SAM2, the next generation of Meta segment anything model for videos and images. So the images one existed previously was very good. And now the ability to segment in video is one of the cool new features and kind of the next frontier for these models. Jensen Huang from NVIDIA was talking about how they're working on similar stuff. For them, it's mainly through various robotic applications training robots and simulations and having them easily be able to recognize objects in the real world to manipulate them to navigate through the environment etc i'll play that clip towards the end but the big takeaways here are that number one they're releasing it they're open sourcing it the model the data the code you're allowed to use it under the permissive apache 2.0 license and as I say, it has many potential real world applications, for example, to create new video effects, unlock new creative applications. Mainly, I think this is going to be used as sort of a foundation for building better AI vision. As they say, aid in faster annotation tools for visual data to build better computer vision systems for AI, for robots, for self-driving cars, etc. And really sort of the big deal here is that number one, SAM2 exceeds previous capabilities in terms of accuracy, better segmentation, better performance. So that makes sense. It's better than the previous models. But also, and this is where things get kind of exciting, so they're able to segment any object in any video or image sort of from scratch. So it's not a model that's trained to recognize cats or dogs or cars specifically. A lot of the previous models, they'd be good at recognizing faces. For example, if you've ever taken pictures with a digital camera, I'm sure you have. You might see that little bounding box around somebody's face. Here, the model is doing something that would be described as zero shot generalization. So zero shot, meaning you don't really need to give it examples, right? You don't need to say, here's 10 pictures of a dog. Now find the dog in this image. As you'll see in a second, you can click on a fast moving bicycle that's racing down the hill and it will keep track of the bicycle. You will segment out the bike without segmenting out the person or the background or anything else. And they're saying before, this took highly specialized technical experts with a lot of resources, with a lot of infrastructure. I'll show you a demo of this model in a second. And as you'll see, these advanced capabilities that took a lot of expertise not that long ago now is child's play. Now, SAM, the first model, has already been used in marine science to segment sonar images, analyze coral reefs, satellite imagery analysis, cellular images, and detecting skin cancer. So as you can see here, it keeps track of ball one, two, and three. It's able to segment specific cells that are swimming around. And as we read from Mark Zuckerberg's open letter, the open letter about open source AI, he's saying that open AI has more potential than any other modern technology to increase human productivity, creativity, and quality of life, all while accelerating economic growth and advancing groundbreaking medical and scientific research. And this is important to understand that if you know, let's imagine a hypothetical scenario where a company creates a tool like this that is very effective at all these things, but they can make a lot of money just selling it in the medical field, treating cancer and other such diseases. 
the company that created that first could have probably made millions, perhaps even billions, selling it to those highly profitable segments. Since Meta released it open source, everybody can use it, build upon it, and they no longer need to pay huge sums of money. All those potential profit opportunities are gone. But as Mark is saying here, open source AI will accelerate economic growth and advance groundbreaking medical and scientific research. It helps make this technology more accessible so we can not only use it, but also innovate upon it. I know some people in the comments have mentioned that they don't really like Mr. Zuckerberg, but I gotta say, gotta give credit where credit is due. The stuff that he's releasing is impressive. It's gonna be very useful and have a real world impact. He's open sourcing the code and weights and the data set, but let's check out the web demo and see what it can do. All right, let's try it out. I'll leave a link down below. Interestingly, I guess if you're from Texas or Illinois, you are not allowed to use it. All right, so here's a video and it looks like, so it's a kid kicking a soccer ball up and down. What's kind of weird to me is that nothing in the background moves. It's perfectly still, there's no wind. Now the grass underneath his feet moves a little bit, but nothing else does. So I feel like, so I'm kind of curious to see if they use the still for the background or what, but you know, obviously they want you to click on the ball. We're gonna get extra tricky and we're gonna select his left shoe. As soon as I click on it, it perfectly selects his left shoe. So it's right side of the screen, but to his left. And I think I'm also able to select other, but let's start with just one. All right, and once we have that selected, we click track objects. And now, as you can see, the shoe is segmented out. It remains blue throughout the whole thing. Here's a, looks like a slow motion kind of replay. The reason I chose that shoe is because at some point I think we lose it completely behind, the, yeah, more or less fully behind the other shoe, yet it still remains. All right, let's do something a little bit more difficult. We're gonna select the watch here. All right, so let me reset it, start over, and I'll find the shot where we can see his watch. It selected the watch, you can see it here. And then we're gonna track objects. Let's see what it can do. So that's looking really well. So even though the watch is not visible in every single frame, it still maintains the segment and the bounding box or the bounding range around it. And uh, it does it really, really well. But what good is any of this technology if it can't track the ball in a game of cups? So this is interesting. So I'm gonna select the ball. I think that's pretty obvious. And then we're gonna click track objects and let's see what happens. So the ball is completely invisible. It's not on screens. In the, well, it's apparent to me that I did not get enough sleep last night. Obviously we wanna be tracking the cup and not the ball. Obviously it'll track the ball when it's visible, but now ideally you would track the ball in case they flip it from one cup to the other and maintain awareness of which cup it is in, but maybe that's asking a little bit too much. Let's see, track objects. So the blue cup is where the ball is. So they're spinning it around and yep, it maintained the location of the ball. But enough games, let's give it something really difficult to do. I'm uploading my very own video and let's see if it's able to keep track of this one. Just a couple of alley cats hanging out, no big deal. I wanna keep track of this one. So the first frame, it starts, it's very small. So this is kind of like what it's seeing as the object. So let's see how well it's gonna be able to do that. It's tracking the cat pretty well so far. Wow, that, I gotta say, is pretty impressive. I think it did a very good job of following the cat as it dodges and <laughs> matrix and parkours its way through the alley. Now, they do give you some suggestions about how to make this better. So for example, here we can adjust the cat like so, it kind of blends into the background, but we can kind of add a few pluses here. But I gotta say, for the most part, it gets it right. I mean, there should be a little bit more there, all right. And here, I guess you can say it's not perfect, but still very, very, very good. Maybe adjust it here, and let's see if that will make it better. I'm gonna say track objects, and here it's replaying it again, and I mean, absolutely stellar. I'm very impressed with this. Plus, I just love watching this clip, it's incredible especially that little cat chasing after him. It's like, wow, really, really? You're also able to download the model here, get the data set, read the paper, try the demo. That's the one we just saw. And of course, SAM2 is available online on GitHub to download and use for your very own favorite purposes. I'll leave you off of a brief clip of Mark Zuckerberg and Jensen Huang talking about these models, their applications, and why they're so exciting. With that said, my name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching. Let's, let's talk about Let's talk about um, the, next, the next wave. Um, you know, one of the things that I really love about the work that you guys do, computer vision, um, 
uh, one of the models that we use a lot internally uh, is segment everything. And um, uh, you know that, that we're now training AI models on video so that we can understand the world model. Now, our use case, our use cases for robotics and, and uh, industrial, industrial uh, digitalization and um, uh, connecting these AI models into Omniverse so that we can, we can um, uh, model and represent the physical world better, uh, have robots that operate in these Omniverse worlds better. Uh, your, your application, uh, uh, the, the Ray-Ban Metaglass, um, uh, your vision for, for uh, bringing AI into the virtual world uh, is really interesting. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, okay, a lot to unpack in there. Um, the segment anything model that, that you're talking about, we're actually presenting, I think, the next version of that here at, at, at SIGGRAPH, segment anything two. Um, and it is, it now works, it's faster, it works with, um, oh, here we go. Um, it works in video now as well. I think these are actually cattle from my ranch in Kauai. This is super cool. Okay, so it's recognizing the cows, track, it's recognizing tracking the cows. Yeah. Yeah, so it's um, a lot of fun effects will be able to be made with this, and because it'll be open, a lot of more serious applications across the industry too. So, yeah. I mean, scientists use this stuff to, you know, study, um, like coral reefs and natural habitats and um, and kind of evolution of landscapes and things like that. But I mean, it's uh, being able to do this in video and having it be a zero shot and be able to kind of interact with it and tell it what you want to track is, um, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool research. So for example, the reason why we use it, uh, for example, you have a warehouse and it's got a whole bunch of cameras and the warehouse uh, AI uh, is watching everything that's going on and let's say, a uh, you know, a stack of boxes fell, uh, or somebody spilt water on the ground, um, or, you know, what, whatever accident is about to happen, the AI recognizes it, generates the text, send it to somebody, and, you know, uh, you know uh, help will come along the way. And so that's one way of using it. Uh, instead of recording everything, if there's an accident, instead of recording every nanosecond of video, and then going back and re retrieve that moment, it just, re it just records the important stuff, because it knows what it's looking at. And yeah. so... So having a vi video understanding model, a video language model, is really, really powerful for all, all these, these interesting applications. 